Good morning. Happy Wednesday. It is Coop Tour Day. Um, so sorry I did not do um, Storytime Tuesdays yesterday. I got my booster shot for COVID on Monday. Um, and then yesterday, I, you know, the, the booster was better than the second shot and a little worse than the first. I wasn't feeling too sick. I just was, you know, lethargic, achy, you know, like super mild cold. And I'm better today. My arm's still a little sore. Sorry, I'm trying to move my arm up to see how sore it is, but my arm's still a little sore, but that's it. So anyway, I mostly rested yesterday and let the, let the vaccine do its thing and build those, um, build that resistance. Um, so I will do story time Thursdays this week and do it tomorrow. Um, but today is coop day, so here we go. Da, 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 da. So it doesn't actually look super exciting, and you probably have seen most of this. Um, so a couple things. We opted not to do the roof this winter. Um, we need to recover the plastic, but um, the reason was is that by the time we got ready to do the roof, so the OSB was up, we'd already had our first snow. Um, and it was really icy up there. I was even nervous trying to put the rest of the, um, like, sheathing up, the OSB sheathing up there, um, because it was so icy. And looking at the weather, I was not confident that we would have another, um, dry spell that would be long enough to get the roof up, because we were going to do shingles. So, what we've decided to do is we just covered it with plastic. Clearly, some of the plastic has come off, so we need to fix that. But, covered it with plastic um, and call it good for winter. And then next year, we might have to replace some of the OSB if it's rotted from being wet. And then we'll put the shingles up next year. So, that's why the roof's not finished. Um, we also haven't finished the siding, which again, is just one of those things that, you know, we'll, we might get to it before spring, we might not. Again, if we have to replace some of the OSB, we have to replace some of the OSB. But you can see the corners up. Um, but we did get the siding on two sides done. So our two tester sides. So that's the siding here, and then I'll show it to you on the back. So we did get some up, just not all of it. This is their duct door. That will open. They might not come out because I just refilled their food and water. But it's got these two clasps that are actually surprisingly hard to open one-handed. But I will try. Um, so you clasp it here and here. And you flip these down. Then I put the clasps back in. And then it opens! And there's the cool door for them to get in and out of. Um, oh, hi. Hi, Bucky. Um, yeah, at some point I'll paint it red, but that is not this point. <laughs> um, so then here's this side with our human door, which I'm very excited about because we've been using plywood for the human door and it's been awful, or OSB. Um, and again, it's got the same two clasps, um, and then a handle, but it doesn't actually clip. It's not like a full door. So this is one of my, like, favorite things about this project. We got this door for $5, but that meant that nothing was carved out of it because it was $5, it was an unfinished door. So it was either, you know, carve out the, the little pieces to get it like a working doorknob or just put a handle on it and put the clasps to keep it shut. So that's what we opted for. At some point we might go through the effort of carving it out, but that's not a this winter project. <sighs> so here's this side and then here's the other back side that has the actual siding on it. Um, the siding makes me very excited, so I might try and do it sooner rather than later. Um, we didn't know how to do the J-strip, so we don't have a J-strip up yet. Um, and again, we need to recover the roof, the plastic on the roof. And now for the inside. So this particular coop is um, 114 square feet on the inside. It's a 10 by 20, but obviously when you do a 10 by 20, it's not actually 10 by 20. Um, so here we go, the door opens, and it's the inside. Hi guys, I just refilled the food and water. Hi guys, so this is the inside. We have all of their, um, that's the insulation. Again, we have most of the OSB sheathing up for it, but, you know, again, if we finish that before our spring, we do, if we don't, we don't. And if we have to replace some stuff, you know, that's fine. Um, so this is a deep litter method that we're using in here. Um, 
we need to get more bedding over top. So essentially what that means is that you have like three to four inches of bedding right away. I don't know what three to four inches looks like. So, you know, somewhere between this and this. Um, and then every month you add a couple more inches and then like stir it up. And then the bottom parts will start to compost. And then about once or twice a year, you can clean it all out. It's compostable. If it still needs to be composted, you can put it in a compost bin. If it's done and all set up, you can toss it right onto the garden. Some people recommend not putting duck poop compost on edible things. Other people don't seem to care about it. So um, I'll do more research on that for you guys and let you know. Um... Yeah, so that's kind of, that's the coop. These are, um, I also just threw together this little brick jungle jimmy thing for them. I feel like having, like, different heights of things to sit on, especially the muscovies. Um, but yeah. So, that's plastic board that used to go over it, so that'll come out. Yeah, there you go. There's their little door. Big coop door. Um, all of this up here is ventilation. So even in winter, it's super important that ducks have enough ventilation because their breath tends to be very wet, obviously. You see them drinking a lot. Um, so it's really important that they have ventilation. Next year, we'll hopefully put up some stuff over there. I don't remember what it's called, but it goes underneath the rafters or the eaves. Not the rafters, the eaves. Um, and then once the roof roof is done, we'll probably put some hardware cloth over those sections. Um, I'm not too worried about anything flying in because I haven't seen any hawks or eagles at this point. Um, and nothing can really climb up there. So, but we'll probably put some hardware cloth at some point over those. It was originally covered by the plastic. Um, but yeah, there you go. They're all headed out now. That is the tour of their coop. Um, and upcoming projects for their coop is I plan on making a tray for their food and water um, to try and keep it from getting too wet and icy in here. Um, so I'm just going to take some of the leftover USB and make a little tray, put 2x4 um, or 1x4 lip around it with a leftover wood and then cover it in tarp um, so that they have somewhere to eat and drink without spraying water all over the poop. Um, so that's one project. And then the other project is making um, nesting. So ducks don't really nest in nesting boxes like chickens. Chickens require nesting boxes that are high up. Ducks don't. They prefer nesting on the ground. The muscovies in particular will find little hidey holes anywhere. And since we have all those wooded areas in the back, I'm worried that if I don't provide quality nesting spots for them, they will run away and nest somewhere else. I don't want that. Um, so what I'll end up doing is taking, they like things like wood piles and stuff like that. Um, are you okay, Dinah? She, uh, that's Stormy. Are you okay, Stormy? You're doing a little run around. Don't be mean. Can't tell. Anyway, um, I'll put a few in here. Um, so they, you know, like wood piles and stuff. So essentially I would just make a box that has a hole just barely big enough, just big enough for a duck. And then I would cover it with some sort of cloth or something to make it feel like, um, a secluded area. And then hopefully by providing them ample, and then we'll put a few outside too. Um, I don't want them to get too far away because they won't always come back. I mean, I've heard of people who have lost ducks for months and then surprise and then thought their duck was dead and surprise you know a month later their duck shows up with you know 10 babies in tow I don't want that because that's a danger to them it's frustrating for me um and I want a little more control over how many ducks I hatch so if any of the muscovies go broody and want to hatch their ducks I want to make sure that they have plenty of safe space nearby that I know about and I know where it is um for them to hatch in so um that's those are the next two projects the uh little hidey holes for them to brood in and me that's it for today um that is our new duck coop and again we'll add some extra stuff to it as we go forward um i'm gonna go sit with my ducks and hang out with them for a little bit
So I have, I've been noticing these YouTube shorts as well, and I have some like short reels. They're called reels on Instagram, but they're essentially the same thing as shorts. So I'll probably post some of, like cross post some of my Instagram ones, um, cause I think they're funny, but I think I'm hilarious. <laughs> Other people don't, and that's okay. Um, so anyway, I'll probably cross post some of those too. Um, so yeah, we'll do story time Thursdays tomorrow, now that I'm feeling back on top. And we'll be back Friday for something just be a chill Friday. Um, one of these days I'm going to give some more ducks a bath, so you'll be seeing more bath stuff soon. All right. Thanks, guys, for everything. Thanks for tuning in. Um, as always, I appreciate you liking, subscribing, sharing, and commenting on my videos. Um, I love hearing your thoughts, and yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, folks. Thanks for tuning in. See you later.